Cool. So we're meeting with Michael to discuss um, the editors of GitLab and the position that we have around the editors and um, discuss how the new pipeline editor fits into this whole ecosystem and what are some opportunities that uh, there might exist and generally just want to catch up on what, what is happening across GitLab when it comes to the editing experiences. So. I will share, I don't know if it's necessary to share my screen actually. I was just taking notes in Figma, but it's just text. So um, the first question that I had based on that video that you did with Marcel, um, and maybe we can link uh, link it in the description in the, um, uh, in the agenda later as well. Um, was uh, about the static site editor. So you mostly talked about the web ID and the single file editor. And I've been hearing about the static site editor, but I really feel like I have no idea what, what's happening there and what it is. Uh, so can you maybe tell me a little bit more about uh, the static site editor and what is the use case? What, what are the jobs to be done there that are being addressed? Just so I understand how it fits into the, this whole scheme. Sure. Uh, so the static site editor is used to be the name of our group, and we were responsible for making it easier for people to contribute to the handbook. So a large majority of our time was focusing on making um, the writing experience for uh, Markdown or the, or the handbook, um, which is um, customarily using Markdown, but we wanted to transition people towards a rich text experience so that um, is more familiar to tools such as Google Docs or Medium or Notion, that type of editing experience. So that was the static site editor. Currently, you can use it within the handbook. So if you go in the handbook right now, uh, on the right hand side, there'll be a link to say like open in a static site editor and that pops up that editor. So um, that was uh, a few months ago. And now the team is looking at uh, different ways of integrating some of the ideas of the static site editor, uh, mainly the rich text editing aspect to um, the single file editor and other um, areas within GitLab where we could uh, write stuff. So issue descriptions or comments and things like that. So that text box, that um, that text area that we're using, um, the team is looking at re-architecturing um, so that everything uses the same editing platform, which is Editor Lite. So I believe as of 13.9, even the web ID will be using this underlining platform called Editor Lite. And on top of that, we're gonna give it different experiences. So one, ex um, one kind of variant would be the web ID. The other one is the single file editor. And the team is looking at um, introducing another variant, which is the rich text editor. And where this mm -hmm. falls in line with the pipeline editor is like the pipeline editor is another variant that sits on top of um, this uh, editor line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Um, and yeah, it, it really makes sense for us to start working closer together uh, to leverage that new technology that we have, because it's a big advantage. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, so yeah, actually, the question about editor light was one of my other questions as well. So you mentioned that in 13.9, uh, all of our editors at that point will be using editor light. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, just to clarify something about the static site editor, um, is it uh, who's the user persona? Who are the people who use uh, static site editor? Uh, yeah, so the persona that we have for the static site editor is um, a person named Eddie, and they are like a content marketer um, person. They're responsible for writing um, mostly kind of blog articles, updates to the handbooks. That's the kind of key role that they play. So that's how they contribute to the product. 
-hmm. content like technically it's content editor but yeah it, like people are marketing product marketing they, they all kind of fall into that space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay that's interesting uh, because in pipeline editor um we're also looking at um abstracting kind of the ui a bit more when you're creating your pipeline so now it's just like a simple text editor but we're uh, as we're moving towards having some kind of visual builder for your pipelines we'll be looking for ways to abstract um the ui a bit more and i haven't looked in detail about uh, at the static site editor and what it does but potentially there could be ways for us to leverage some of the patterns that you've already used. You mentioned that that's the intention kind of to borrow between the different editors and see how we can streamline the experience and leverage the strength of the different editors. Yeah. So um, as of date, uh, you probably won't get anything out of the static site editor and that's like um, insightful for the pipeline and pipeline editor. What we have always envisioned the static site editor or, or now what we call like the rich text editing experience is that once it encounters a, like a block where it's there's a more efficient way to um, edit it. Uh, so for example, mermaid diagrams or like in your example, the pipeline editor that it could like pop out to another editing experience. Um, so I think the pipeline editor is actually one of the first that will like encounter this world of like oh here's a content block that could be used uh, with a different editor to make your life easier um we never got that far as far as we got was like oh here's a content block that's not um not uh, text so we can parse to say like oh this is a mermaid diagram this is some other kind of diagram um and this is a table and things like that and we would have different renderers for it um mm -hmm. but yeah the, the big vision was that like different types of things would have different types of editors mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense so um i just wrote down some interesting suggestions around uh, I think I think you mentioned using um, kind of leveraging the MR page and providing or reusing. I think you mentioned reusing the inline code comments and suggestions as this more abstracted way to also provide suggestions with embedded experience. Um, I found it very interesting because this is something that we're, we were thinking about for the pipeline editor as well for the optimized cycle when you're setting up your pipeline. So uh, let's say you create your pipeline configuration, you run the pipeline and it works. So it kind of works, but there are inefficiencies. So because of how you architecture your pipeline, it's just not as fast as it could be. And um, it's, it's like a long way down the road, but we could in, uh, make intelligent uh, kind of um, predictions and suggestions uh, to the user uh, saying that, hey, if you use this keyword and you changed your pipeline in this way, and here's the code that would do that, your pipeline will run like 20% faster, for example, which saves you a lot of money because you pay for CI minutes. So then we would pop up some kind of suggestion. So it's basically a code suggestion that you apply to your uh, CI CD file. So I guess it kind of works in a similar way in a Mars. Um, so we already have a similar pattern for that. Uh, and it's interesting to see that there are lots of parts that uh, we can really leverage across the experience. And I think the more we can do that, the more consistency we will also bring in, into the experience. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen just to uh, ensure that we're talking about the same thing here. Mm -hmm. So um what we're talking about is it this thing or it, are you talking about something else so i'm I, talking in in merge requests 
Mm -hmm. uh, if you open the merge request, uh, code suggestion, yeah, change suggestions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know uh, what's the exact name for those. Yeah, yeah so, so like, I, I think that's a really good uh, future thing, thing that we could both explore because this is something that is like just more blue sky thinking is at the mm -hmm. moment, um, the static site editor team has always been focusing on the editing or uh, content creation process, but a big part of collaboration is also the reviewing stage. So we made it easy for people to write um, Markdown, but like reviewing Markdown is no fun, right? It's like mm -hmm. lots of mm -hmm. syntax and ticks and stuff like that. Um, so this is what a current like MR looks like for a merge request. And mm -hmm. what I was envisioning was that you could almost have like a a rendered view of your changes. So kind of like Google Docs um, where you mm -hmm. can have like suggested and edited change. And because you could use, you could view everything, for example, side by side or like in line that what you were just suggesting with your pipelines is that you could have like mm -hmm. two pipelines overlaid on each other or, you know, like two pipelines side by side. Essentially, it's just two files uh, and then the, we just have the renderer on it. I'm simplifying a mm -hmm. lot of things here. It's still early days. So, you know, there's probably something that um, is challenging to do. Um, but like the idea that, yeah, you can see the difference in yeah, I like this idea where if we use the suggestion framework, you know, we could have like a thing that creates the suggestions on behalf of a user, like a robot kind of automated thing, and mm -hmm. it would just show up just like this. Um, but yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, this is great. Um, I can see how it could be an interesting idea to entertain for the pipeline editor as well. So initially we're thinking uh, just applying code. So it would literally kind of look like the MR suggestions where mm -hmm. you see the suggested code and you can accept it into your file. Mm -hmm. um, but I also really like the idea of uh, providing like an abstraction layer on top. So you show the render text, we could show like a pipeline visualization. Mm -hmm. This is actually something that we can already do. So currently we, uh, we constantly generate your pipeline visualization as you're writing your uh, file in the pipeline editor. So you don't have to commit to see the pipeline, uh, like a very basic pipeline structure it's, it's basic, so it doesn't show all of the details, but it mm -hmm. shows the basic structure of the pipeline. Um, so we could maybe show that. Uh, of course, it requires more validation, like what yeah. exactly uh, would our users want to see, but it'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Let me see if I had any other questions. Uh, yeah, another idea related to the merge request page actually that I had was that um, based on the workflow that we're designing for with the pipeline authoring team and the pipeline editor specifically, is that when someone is creating a pipeline um, for their team, um, it will probably be followed by a merge request where they will be reviewing that pipeline in the merge request. And if they're reviewing the pipeline, would it make sense uh, to provide some kind of custom editing experience there when you're uh, reviewing code right there when someone is making suggestions and so on. Uh, so again, it was just like a quick idea that I had, but if we're starting to look at offering custom editing experience, then we should look at all of the different places where we provide that. So not just the main editors, but also the merge requests. Yep. And I think that's what I was showing earlier, where mm -hmm. we focus a lot on the creation part, but not so much on the review stage and the review stage, mm -hmm. be it suggestion or like, you know, maybe you just go in and make an edit because he's it's a bigger change than the suggestion. So you just want to jump in, make that change. And that's kind of the thing that mm -hmm. we were trying to talk about with the positioning of the web ID versus the single file editor, where people have these workarounds of 
using the single file editor and applying suggestions as a way to do edits. So, and I know that um, one of the engineers on within our group has already experimented with having like an edit button right there in the merge request uh, to like mm -hmm. make those experiences easier. And the beauty that everything's on top of one kind of like framework is that if you click edit on a you know a YAML uh, pipeline uh, file, then you know, maybe the your your pipeline editor pops up instead of uh, like mm -hmm. the raw data. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Uh, so we're almost at time, but um, just wanted to kind of quickly see if we have any efforts in flight that would make sense to continue collaborating on. Uh, obviously, like no pressure if um, a lot of it is not urgent. We we all have our own priorities of, for, for our teams to fulfill first. But yeah, is there anything like any low hanging fruits that we could start exploring? Uh, I've been thinking about the commit uh, area, but um, oh, just let me know what are your thoughts on this. Um, yeah, uh, so one of the things that we talked about um, within the group in the past was the static site editor team was starting to head down the path of creating their own commit and merge request flows. And that angle was coming from like a non-developer kind of view. And then we have the commit flow of the web ID, which is very close to Visual Studio code. And we have the commit flow of the single file editor and it felt very disparate and we wanted to consolidate that. So. I really like that you already created the issue um, to talk about it, but that's where our group is coming from. It's like, um, what we're thinking is that there might be some ideas that that the static site editor coming from, like trying to make things easier for people to like find their approver or like hint to you and guide you where to go next. Um, maybe that's useful in the overall flow and perhaps the structure of everything is the same, but you might, show more information in certain in certain workflows than others so that's mm -hmm. what we're high level talking about and but yeah at the moment it's just talking it's nothing we haven't really put anything down yet um we're looking at making some changes with um the web id uh with some of their tab navigation and uh, tabs so at the moment, there's like the files and review and changes. Um, it's being considered to remove one of the tabs, uh, which is uh, the review tab and just have changes in the, the edit uh, mode. So that stuff's uh -huh, in flight, but... Uh, can, I, just, I just wanted to briefly focus on this because we had very similar ideas. So in pipeline editor, we have now an issue to add a separate tab to preview changes um, inside the editor. So I'm, I'm wondering, uh, were there specific insights that led to this decision? Uh, why are you removing the review tab? Um, let me point you to the issue because I thought it was, um, It's actually like a very long, it has a long history as in like lots of people have mm -hmm. been thinking about this. Because um, people like high level, people get confused when they come in as in like, what is this? Oops. Um, so yeah, and mm -hmm. I'm planning to do a solution validation in a couple of weeks to take a look at um, how how that experience could be improved. So mm -hmm. the main mm -hmm. kind of scenario is when people are jumping from from the merge request page and opening it in a web ID, they're in a state of review, but um, it's not very clear and mm -hmm. and it feels redundant to have the information there. So that's the idea of potentially removing it um and then the idea of previewing um, what the pipeline might look like and stuff like that this is where from the web id perspective thinking about you know should we integrate this with gitpod or um 
doing more with the live preview thing. So in the web ID right now, there, there are there is that live preview tab on the right hand side. So you know you still have that option if you wanted to do something pipeline specific. Yeah. Yeah, so for the pipeline, we already have a visualization. So you can preview the structure of the pipeline. It, it's already um, released. Uh, but I'm very interested in combining the review and commit flow together. So uh, by review, um, we mean just previewing like lines of code, like what changed. Mm -hmm. So we need to highlight what changed. Uh, so initially we were just gonna add a separate tab as an MVC, which probably we're still going to do as an MVC, but the, the next duration, my idea was to review our commit flow. So currently we're just using the same form uh, that the single file editor uses. It's it's really like an odd experience. And uh, my idea was to also look at the review flow when I'm redesigning the commit flow and combine them together. So it makes a lot of sense. So I'll go through the issue and just going to ping you somewhere with my ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, would love to see that because yeah, you, you might be solving some of the problems that we we would need to solve too. So, okay, awesome. Uh, I have to run to another meeting, but mm -hmm. thanks so much, Michael. It was super insightful. Yep, no problem. And look forward to our next chat. Have a great day. Bye. You too. Bye.